Welcome to another service video. This video will cover recharging a DOAS or dedicated outdoor air system with refrigerant. So let's jump right into it. Connect the red service hose from your gauge manifold to the liquid line service port by the filter dryer. Then connect the blue service hose from your gauge manifold to the low side service port. Now connect a temperature clamp to the liquid line near the liquid line service port. Place the system in evacuation mode by using the unit HMI. Start by pressing the top two buttons simultaneously, navigate down to the service menu, and input the password 1234 if prompted. Go down again to the test menu, then down again to evacuation mode and enable. Ensure the compressor does not run during this time by pressing the off reset button on the compressor VFD. Prior to charging the unit with refrigerant, it's recommended to check the oil level in the compressor crankcase sight glass. It's easier to add oil if needed prior to charging the unit. Checking the oil level and adding is preferably done during the repair process so that any non-condensables introduced during adding the oil will be removed. You do not want to run the compressor low on oil during the charging process as this could damage the compressor. Connect the yellow common service hose to a full cylinder of refrigerant. Open the tank valve and invert the tank for liquid refrigerant. Place the tank on a charging scale and zero out the scale. If using a recovery cylinder with clean recovered refrigerant to recharge the unit, be sure to connect the common yellow service hose to the valve marked liquid on the tank. There's no need to invert this type of tank as there is a dip tube in the tank that will pull liquid refrigerant from the bottom of the tank. Purge all hoses of non-condensables, then open the high side hand valve on your manifold set to start adding liquid refrigerant into the liquid line while watching the scale. Locate and reference the factory refrigerant charge weight on the unit label. Be sure not to add more than this amount refrigerant prior to starting the compressor to prevent overcharging the unit. When charging with refrigerant, often the pressure in the system reaches a point where it's equal to the pressure in the charging cylinder from which the system is being charged. In order to get more refrigerant into the system to complete the charge, you can try heating the cylinder with a heat gun or a tank warming blanket. Never use an open flame or a torch to apply heat to a refrigerant tank. Once the pressure in the charging cylinder and the unit is balanced, close the high side hand valve on the manifold set. If the factory charge has not been reached and the unit has been charged to at least 50% of the unit rated factory charge, the remainder of the charging process will need to be completed with the compressor running. Start by aborting the evacuation mode in the HMI and verify the unit is in the idle state. It should not be in cooling, heating, reheat, or blower modes. Occupied scheduling must also be disabled. Next, place the unit in cooling test mode by again pressing the top two buttons on the HMI and navigating to the test menu and starting the test cooling mode. Verify that the supply blower is running. Compressor is running at max speed, 200 hertz or 330 hertz, depending on the compressor model. If the unit has the reheat option, verify that the reheat valve is closed by navigating to the service menu, then to the test menu, test cooling, cooling configuration, and finally set reheat to zero. Continue charging the unit by slowly opening the low side manifold gauge handle and meter the liquid refrigerant into the suction line slowly. Caution must be taken not to allow the liquid refrigerant to flow too fast and flood the compressor with liquid refrigerant. Once the factory rated refrigerant charge has been metered into the system, close the low side manifold gauge handle and proceed to fine tuning the refrigerant charge with the subcooling method. Navigate to the service menu, temperatures, then discharge connection temperature and note the discharge temperature. Now adjust the condensing fan speed until the discharge temperature is stabilized at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. To adjust the fan speed, access the service menu, then the test menu, then test cooling, then cooling configuration, and finally condenser speed. Once the condensing temperature is stabilized at 110 degrees Fahrenheit, read and record the liquid pressure at the liquid line pressure port fitting. Read and record the temperature of your digital thermometer on the liquid line. Reference your high pressure gauge or use a pressure temperature chart to convert the measured liquid pressure 
to the corresponding condenser coil saturation temperature. Subtract the measured line liquid temperature from the saturation temperature to calculate the actual subcooling. Subcooling should be approximately 10 to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, and the superheat reading on the HMI should be approximately 20 degrees Fahrenheit. If subcooling is low, you may need to add refrigerant. If subcooling is high, you may need to remove refrigerant. Check out our other DOAS videos in the description below. If you have any questions about this or any of our products, please feel free to call or email. Thanks for watching.